What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson, and today I'm going to give you five reasons why you should consider learning Scheme in 2024. But first of all, what is Scheme? Scheme is a minimal yet incredibly powerful member of the Lisp family of languages. Because it's a Lisp, it shares the same parenthesis-oriented syntax as other Lisp languages, but it's quite unique compared to common Lisp, Lisp or Clojure, for example. In this video, I'm going to give you five reasons why I think it's worth your time to learn Scheme this year. And if after the video you're interested to learn it, I'm running a four-week live instructional course called Hands-On Guile Scheme for Beginners starting in February, this February. Uh, you can find a link uh, with more details in the description and show notes below. The link is right here on the screen. I'll also be making more advanced courses this year about Guile Scheme and other topics. So if you want to be notified about those, you can sign up for my newsletter. Uh, you can check out the link in the description or just go to systemcrafters.net slash newsletter. Now let's talk about Scheme. Reason number one, you will deepen your programming knowledge. Scheme is a great language both for beginners and for intermediate to advanced programmers. This is because the core language design provides a small set of features that work together to help you build well-crafted functional programs. For beginners, there's less to learn at first, uh, and the focus on the fundamentals of computation and data structures helps to build a good foundation for writing solid code. For advanced programmers, there are a few powerful features of the language that will really expand your mind and give you the tools to write code that just isn't possible in other languages, but more on that in a bit. Uh, first, I'd like to say a little bit more about functional programming, though. So Scheme is centered around functional programming, where the function is the core unit of abstraction. It's a great, great first language to learn uh, functional programming because it isn't as strict about everything being pure functional with immutable data structures like in other languages, like let's say Clojure or Haskell or even ML, F Sharp, other languages like that. Where other languages like Java or C++ use classes as the central aspect of your code, Scheme programs use functions that encapsulate their own information and pass those functions to other functions to compose more sophisticated behavior. You can start to see now where uh, the term functional programming comes, comes from. Scheme also promotes recursion as a key aspect for algorithm design. Uh, and recursion is basically when uh, one function calls itself many times to affect basically a loop or some other kind of behavior that needs to go uh, back over the same pattern uh, many times. It's easy to create recursive blocks of code anywhere in Scheme without defining a function to produce elegant alg algorithms for pretty much any kind of iteration, even if the data source doesn't have a predetermined length. So reason number two, uh, while keeping a pretty minimal core language, Scheme actually provides a few powerful features that aren't available in many other language. Uh, the first being efficient recursion. So before I mentioned uh, that Scheme often uses recursion to implement algorithms. In some lang languages, recursion can be troublesome because when a function calls itself many times, it may exceed the number of function calls that the call stack can handle, leading to errors. Um, so whenever you start a program, when you've written a program, you start the program, there's always an entry point, some function that gets called first, and that function may call other functions, and you lead down this path of a whole bunch of functions. And if you call too many functions without going back to the beginning, uh, eventually you might reach the limit of the programming language or the runtime environment, and it will throw an error. So this is something that you can run into when using recursion uh, over large data sets in programs. Though scheme implementations provide a feature called tail call optimization, which can help you avoid this problem by enabling, enabling recursive algorithms to seem more like plain loops to the compiler. And when you become comfortable writing scheme code, you'll find many ways to use this feature even outside of recursive loops. I, I quite like the idea of tail call optimization. I use it quite often. The next thing is hygienic macros. So one of the first things that you hear about Lisp languages is the ability to write macros or basically functions that can produce new code when they're called. Uh, you often use this to uh, eliminate common patterns in your code or maybe make a domain spe specific language in your code to simplify the way to describe the solution to a particular kind of problem. So lists that provide a macro capability usually expose it as a simple code templating facility using a feature called backquoting. This is basically just syntactic sugar for creating lists. Uh, and since Lisp code is all based on lists, your macro function is creating a list that then gets interpreted by uh, the compiler as code. So the compiler can take that list and then turn it into executable to code at compile time. So the trouble with this approach is that the macro author has to be much more careful not to make a mistake when writing a macro because it's very easy to introduce bugs that can affect program behavior in surprising ways. If you've ever heard of the uh, term variable capture, um, this is one thing that can happen when writing macros. We'll talk about that in another video, probably. 
So Scheme has a different macro design, which enables you to give more information to the compiler about how the macro will be used, making it possible for the compiler to manage the environment of the generated code more effectively, uh, which means that not only will you have less bugs due to the way that you wrote your macros, you'll also usually get better error messages whenever you write code using that macro because the compiler sort of understands the structure of the code that the macro is trying to interpret. Uh, so it, it ends up being a better experience for the user of your macro. Uh, the third advanced function that, that I want to talk about, which is probably the most exciting function or the most exciting uh, feature, is first class continuations, which are basically an advanced control flow feature of Scheme. Uh, control flow being basically how your code controls how the uh, execution of the program happens. And it's one of the most unique things about the language. So first class in this case means that the language provides this as a tool for you to use rather than just being a uh, compiler implementation detail like it might be in other compilers. So I mentioned the idea of a call stack before. Typically when a program starts, the code calls a series of functions, which creates a stack, basically just a, a series of functions that all stack on top of each other, uh, which eventually returns back to the original location where the program started. But in scheme programs, it's possible to store that entire call stack and replace it with another call stack while the program is running. So this stored call stack is called a continuation and it's represented as a function that when called restores the call stack and resumes execution of the code at that point. Now, it sounds kind of weird. Why would you need this in a language? Uh, but it's actually possible to implement many advanced language features with this. So basically what I'm trying to say is Scheme has a small set of features to start with, but between macros and continuations, you could basically implement any language feature that exists in any other language. So things like try catch style exceptions or early returns in recursive search algorithms. So if you've got like a really deep uh, nesting structure that you have to search for something in, it's easy to use a continuation just to pop back to the top. Uh, cooperative multitasking and or code routines, which is basically the same thing. So it's re really easy to write code that uh, looks synchronous, but is actually asynchronous. Uh, you can uh, create Go style channels. Um, and also you can implement the actor model, which is a similar kind of thing, but not exactly the same. Uh, but it's just a way to design your program so that you have multiple concurrent lines of code executing and communicating with each other. So I will tell you that your brain might hurt a little bit while learning to use code uh, continuations, but that's good. That's sort of the point of learning a language like Scheme. All right. So uh, Scheme is not a single language implementation. It's actually a language specification with many implementations. The core language is described by the R star RS series of specifications, uh, each being a more refined version of the last. The most recent is R7 RS small, which was finalized in 2013. And I think this document is well worth reading if you're interested in programming languages in general. But if you want to learn Scheme, it basically describes everything about the language you could want to know. It's not really like a tutorial, but it is a clear specification of what the language prov provides and how it's supposed to operate. I find it to be quite interesting reading, you know, it's just a kind of a relaxing thing to read whenever you're sitting on the couch, that kind of thing. So there's uh, scheme implementations for many use cases, all with their own slight differences and use cases. Uh, first being Guile scheme, which is uh, used for programming sensibility, application development, system management, etc. in the GNU ecosystem. Um, also, there's Racket, which uh, a lot of people have heard about, maybe you've tried it before. It's more than just a scheme. It actually is a front end for many different uh, languages. It's kind of like a language uh, building toolkit, uh, but it's very nice um, implementation and eco er, uh, environment if you want to learn scheme and work with scheme. There's also Shea scheme, which is an industrial grade scheme with a cutting edge implementation for a lot of things. Uh, a lot of new ideas for Scheme were uh, developed as a result of Shea Scheme. Uh, there's Gambit Scheme, which is a Scheme to C compiler, which makes it possible to write Scheme code that you can compile and deploy anywhere that a, a C compiler is available, which is pretty powerful. You think about it, you can write Scheme code to run on a Raspberry Pi or run on an embedded system or uh, run in the cloud, etc. There's also Loco Scheme, where you can write Scheme that compiles to bare metal, which basically means it's uh, machine code that can run directly on the hardware without any kind of intermediate operating system, et cetera. And then there's Chibi Scheme, which embeds directly into C applications to provide scheme-based scripting or extensibility in programs. And there's many more. If you go to the scheme.org website, in fact, it's get.scheme.org, uh, you'll see a listing of all the sort of currently um, maintained and active scheme implementations in, in case you want to check out uh, other ones that might exist. Uh, but for the purpose of this channel, we focus mainly on Guile Scheme, which I find to be the most practical and versatile for personal projects. 
So reason number four, you can write any kind of application with it. So you might have heard on the internet that Scheme is just like an academic language, but that's not really the case. There are many practical implementations uh, that you can use to write Scheme code. So just like many other popular languages, there are a wealth of Scheme libraries that make it possible to write pretty much any kind of application you want, whether it's terminal apps, UI apps with GTK, Qt, Qt, et cetera, uh, web servers and clients, games, mobile apps, uh, et cetera. So um, if you wanna write a certain kind of code, you can definitely do it with Scheme, but the choice of Scheme implementation is important in determining whether you can write those, those types of applications. You can even interface directly with low-level code using implementations like Guile Scheme and uh, Gambit and others, uh, which usually provide some kind of foreign function interface. And in the case of Guile Scheme, there is a runtime foreign function interface, which means you don't have to compile any C code to call out to a C library function. So this means that whenever you use Guile, you can actually load up any C library, whether it's a UI toolkit, some networking code, anything, and call directly into the C functions, which basically gives you access to pretty much anything you would want to do on a computer. So uh, there's also the new development of Guile Hoot by the Sprightly Institute, which uh, allows you to compile Scheme applications to WebAssembly to run in stable versions of Chrome and Firefox, which is pretty exciting to me. Uh, Hoot places Scheme at the forefront of current WebAssembly compilers uh, with a support for host managed garbage collection and tail call optimization, both of which are very, very new features to the WebAssembly standard and just got dropped into the latest uh, releases of Chrome and Firefox. So it's definitely worth checking out Guile Hoot if you want to see like what the future of writing Scheme applications for the web could look like. And reason number five is that you will get the full benefit of uh, GNU Geeks. Uh, learning Scheme will make it possible for you to master GNU Geeks because you will be able to dive into the code and understand how everything works. So basic Scheme knowledge will certainly make it easier to write system configurations and basic package definitions, but you will benefit from more experience working with Scheme to go further and write things like service definitions and other more specific customizations to how you use Geeks. Uh, I think that GNU Geeks is a great practical way to use Scheme. So if you're using, if you're looking for some reason to learn Scheme, uh, I would say using GNU Geeks is one of the best ways to do it because it gives you the ability to uh, manage your entire system and multiple systems and deploy containerized applications and do uh, sandbox development on local machines. There's lots of things that it can do and Scheme is the reason why GNU Geeks exists and it is the primary interface for uh, customizing and interacting with it. So it's pretty cool. So if you haven't heard of GNU Geeks before, I've made a number of videos on this channel about it, including one called Five Reasons to Try Geeks in 2022, but the things in that video are still relevant in 2024. So uh, you will still get something out of that video if you check it out. A uh, link to that is in the show notes, which is linked in the description. So um, now that I've given you my five reasons for why I think you should learn Scheme this year, I wanna hear from you. Let me know in the comments below, have you tried Scheme before? And if you did, how did it go? Uh, if you haven't tried Scheme yet, why not? So uh, don't forget about the hands-on Guile Scheme Beginners course that I'll be running in February. Uh, the link is in the show notes and in the description below. And for just general learning resources about Scheme, check out the official Scheme community site at scheme.org. It's a relatively new site, and I think it's got a lot of really cool stuff there, really well organized, so uh, you should check that out. So I hope you learned something useful about this, uh, about Scheme in this video. If you did, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for more, and until next time, happy hacking. We'll see you.